Should you buy silver bars? Tim, this is like my first kilo bar ever. I'm not sure I'm gonna keep it, but it is pretty hefty. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Whoa, a kilo bar. I bought this at Tim's, my local coin shop dealer. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to, but I'm going to tell you why at the very end. I am not typically a silver bar guy. Um, it's really not stacking the Yankee way. And if you're new to my channel and you don't know what stacking the Yankee way is, well, it's primarily three things. Gold, which I, I don't have handy right now. Government minted silver bullion, like you see over here on the right-hand side. We've got Britannias, we've got Canadian maple leaves, we've got, of course, the American Silver Eagle, which is a 2021. And the last thing is constitutional silver, or what some people call junk silver. That is also a really important part of my stack, and I, again, don't have it with me handy. I just wanted to put a little bit out on my table to discuss bars, okay? So I don't stack bars. If you've been on my channel for, what, close to three years now, you know why. I mean, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I don't normally do it, and then why I bought this, okay? Uh, this is a kilo bar. Four nines, fine. Nothing on the back. And then this uh, flying eagle. It looks a lot like the sunshine mint type of uh, stamp there. Not exactly sure where it's from. When I see four nines, fine. It makes me think of Canadian mint, the Royal Canadian mint. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe some of you out there know where this bar originates from. But even Tim didn't know for sure. When I was at Tim's and I was uh, holding this bar, uh, there was a, a, a lady that came in, she was new to stacking, really didn't know much about silver. And one thing that I love about Tim is that he really does a fantastic job helping uh, new stackers. Uh, you know, he explains the basics. She had a lot of questions, and I have to admit I did chime in when she asked me if I was going to buy this thing. <laughs> um, and what she said about this was one of my points. So why not bars? And just clarity wise here, a bar is defined as a non-government minted uh, amount of silver. Uh, it can be either in a form of a square or a rectangular bar like this. It can actually be rounds, okay? A round is simply a round bar, all right? It doesn't matter how big you wanna get them. Even this one right here, I love the uh, buffalo, this five ounce is really cool, but that's a bar, okay? That 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 actually is a round bar. Here's a uh, a ten ounce uh, regular rectangular bar, if you will. So, uh, you know, there are different ways to view bars. Well, when I say bars, I'm gonna primarily talk about you know the the big chunky rectangular stuff like this. All right, why don't I get them? Well, simply put. There's a liquidity issue when it comes to bars. Bullion coins, like the, like the American Silver Eagle, all right, is generally more liquid than bars. And when I say liquid, that, that means it's easily sold uh, back to a dealer, usually get a little bit over spot, um, depending on what it is, right? Canadian Maple Leaf versus American Silver Eagle, slight difference. But when it comes to bars and rounds, you're, you're going to get pretty much spot. In fact, some dealers will give you a little less than spot. Hopefully not a lot less than spot. I mean, it's it's a crazy time right now. So, you know, it, it it's a liquidity thing, in my opinion. Um, the coins are more popular. They're more heavily produced than the bullion bars, right? It gives you know, these guys over here, a convenience in selling them back to the dealer. And, you know, that's important for a lot of you out there. You're looking to buy your silver and then sell it back. Okay, maybe you're flipping it. Maybe you're just going to, you know, try to get capital appreciation on the silver bullion you have and you want to sell it right back.
Part of stacking the Yankee way is I don't sell my bullion. I may flip an item or two that has, you know, a lot of uh, uh, appeal, you know, currently in the community. But when it comes to my overall stack, once I buy it, it remains permanently there until I potentially need it to exchange for, you know, goods and services after an SHTF scenario. And if that never happens, which I pray it doesn't, I'll just pass it on to my progeny, my kids. <laughs> That's it. It's insurance, folks. Okay, I know a lot of you out there uh, don't view it that way, but that's okay. Just as long as you're stacking, it doesn't matter how you're viewing it. But um, be aware that, you know, when you try to sell something like this, you're not going to get uh, any sort of premium on most bars and rounds. Now, there are exceptions. If there's a, a high demand for a certain type of round, yes, you could get a premium for it. If it's a, a rarer bar, like Tim talks about right here, you might get a premium. Was we were recycling Englehart and John C. Matthew bars. Mm -hmm. um, John C. Matthew bars are now Asahi, yes. and uh, Englehart hasn't made anything for forty something years. Um, no, there just is not a lot of silver kilo bars yeah. or hundred ounce bars. We always buy them, you know, because we always have customers for them. Uh, but they're not cheap. If I have to get them from a wholesaler, the price is pretty um, unbelievable. Man, you had a you have another one in there. So those go pretty fast. The kilo bar. The yeah. kilo bars. Yeah, they're a little different, and they um, it's a good chunk of silver. Um, Thirty-two point one five troy ounces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't know where this one came from. I think it, it's um, the eagle is very similar to the sunshine eagle. I think right. it comes from SD bullion. Okay. And they they may have them made for themselves. Well, they have it. I mean, it's it's getting harder and harder to get those big bars, especially the name ones, right? The the Asahi, uh, the Inglehard bars that they don't make anymore. Those would come with a slight premium if you were buying them, but it's just harder to find, and that rarity is driving up the price. So I found that very interesting. You are going to pay more of a premium with this, and some people hate government-minted silver bullion because of that premium. I don't. I think that is worth it as long as, you know, you, you try to get the lowest premium possible on government minted silver bullion. The additional transactional value, okay, in a government minted silver bullion coin has a greater appeal during times of financial crisis. Now, you might say, wait, 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 you're not going to actually part with this bullion coin Yankee, right? Just at face value. Well, you're right. Of course, I'm not going to do that. It's worth way more uh, due to its intrinsic value based on the silver content of this coin than that $5 uh, amount printed on there, or in the case of the American Silver Eagle, the $1. I'm not going to do that. However, there is, there is a caveat here. And I want to explain this. This is important. I get asked this a lot. I would use them for a dollar in the case of an American Silver Eagle, but not under a fiat dollar system. What do I mean by that? Well, after a currency reset, which I think is on its way, what if one dollar of, a, of a, an ASC would buy you nine millimeter ammunition. What if a gallon of gasoline cost 10 cents with a silver dime? You see, this denomination in silver, $1, could actually be a useful measure as a medium of exchange. You could see things priced in silver. One dollar American Silver Eagle buys this good or this service. So that is where I think that one dollar denomination could come in handy. All right, so let me get back to bars, okay? So another reason I, I, I really don't go for bars is that it's not quite trusted like these coins, okay? There's no uh, in uh, no hallmarking on it. I mean, this is again, I have no idea, you know, where this was made, who made it, how 
trustworthy it really is. And I'm assuming this is, you know, 100% silver, right? Four nines, fine. But it could be faked. And in a case of uh, a post SHTF environment, people might not trust this. I don't think they actually would trust this as much as they would one of these. Now, of course, there's a lot of people in our country and in other countries too, in Canada or Great Britain, that don't even know what this is. But in a time of real crisis, I think they would learn quite quickly uh, what these coins are and would trust them. There's a built-in hallmark on each one of these. Okay, Liberty, in God we trust, the date. United States of America it says fine, you know, silver, and it has the denomination of one dollar. Again, this, that, you know, that trust is a big deal to me. These coins really have uh, uh, an appeal for the masses. Okay, if you're just starting to stack, this is what you're probably focusing on. And think about it in terms of uh, a financial crisis. Actually, just go back to the 2008 financial crisis. No silver bullion bar or round did better than most popular silver bullion coins during that time. It's true. If you look at the charts, you'll actually see that these fared much better during the, in that crisis. The silver bar market is so tiny, it typically mimics but underperforms the price premiums for government minted silver bullion. In a financial crisis, it is this stuff, government issued coins, which really has the highest demand. And, and that's important to me. Um, guys, think of it. We are headed into another financial crisis. Now, if I've uh, triggered you silver bar people out there, I'm sorry, okay? I appreciate if you're still watching this video. In fact, if you are, don't forget to hit the thumbs up right now. That would really help uh, get this video out, to help uh, newbies that are just getting into stacking. Also, some of you, you know, old timers that, you know, have some opinions on what I'm saying here, you know, put it down in the comments. I appreciate it. So definitely hit the like, but let me give you the reason I bought this. And, you know, it's some support for a silver bar, okay? There is an amazing uh, allure with a silver bar. I can't deny it, okay? It, I, I can't explain it. <laughs> I can't justify it. It just exists. There's a there's a rawness that is palpable when you hold it. Okay, it's it's visceral. People go, whoa! All right. In fact, a lady at Tim's shop literally said, "Whoa!" when she picked it up. I didn't film her, but she did. And oh, she also said this, and it was just you know music to my ears when she said it. She said, would I have to like cut a chunk off this thing to barter with it? I mean, yeah, <laughs> that goes back to my point about its uh, you know, liquidity. It's a big, hefty bar. Again, if you want to buy one of these and then sell it for a profit, that's great. But if you're holding it for an SHTF, you might want to think twice about it. Anyways, it, it caught my interest. I mean, just holding this thing, it's 32.15 ounces, Troy ounces. That's a lot. That's like more than a tube of American Silver Eagles. That's, man, that's what really uh, struck me. And I don't, I don't think I'm going to be a bar guy, although you guys in the comments are sure going to razz me probably about it. The point is, I'm actually not even sure I'm going to hold on to this. I'm thinking of selling this. All right, I might, I might sell it on the next uh, Ask Yankee live stream. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but I'm not going to be uh, making a, uh, you know, a habit, if you will, of buying silver bars. At least, you know, not not this big, man. Although I can't imagine buying a hundred ounce bar. I mean, if you if you have, 
Put that in the comments below too. I'd love to know how many of you have a 100 ounce bar. Anyways, I hope this uh, video helped. If you have more questions, leave it in the comments below. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.